and cities in the state. Talking specifically for the, for the first quarter, the decorative business in India saw an improvement in demand conditions over May and June after a complete washout in April. The business picked up progressively in tier two, tier three, and four cities where the demand conditions were better. However, in metros and some tier one cities, the business was much slower. While the business achieved about 80% of the base volumes in May, we managed to register a double digit volume growth in, of more than 14% in the month of June. At an overall level for the first quarter, the business was able to achieve about 62% of the base of the previous year in volume terms and around 56% in value terms. This was, this was achieved on the back of pushing upgradation and premium range of products across categories and markets. The safe painting campaign was very successful to get the paranoia of the customer mindset and was the key ingredient to get the people to paint. Our campaign on terrace waterproofing also got good traction to push consumers into waterproofing their homes before the monsoons. Our foray into the health and hygiene category helped us push our Royal Health Shield, where we had a new variant, which offers all surface antibacterial protection. This coupled with our foray in Viroprotect sanitizers and launch of some innovative products has created excitement in the category. The introduction of a new sanitizing service, San Assured, has added to the Asian Paint service brand and our ability to reach out across a large number of homes and living spaces in the country. The international business portfolio also had a good performance given the fact that markets in UAE and Africa were open in April. And the portfolio performance improved progressively during the quarter across all the markets. We managed to register a good double digit volume growth in the month of June after a negative growth in April and May. Asia was the worst affected region for us with the key unit of Nepal being most severely affected with almost complete washout for April as well as, well as May due to the COVID related disruptions. Units in Africa and Middle East were relatively better. Ethiopia in particular managed to register low single digit growth for the quarter despite business being slow for most of the quarter. The automotive coatings JV, which we call as the PPGAP, continued to severely be impacted with the COVID related business restrictions, only adding further to the slowdown pressures in the automotive industry. And while the industrial coatings JV which is AP PPG was also impacted. It still witnessed an, over, an, an improving trend in the month of June in both protective coatings and the powder coating segment. Both the segments within the home improvement business, the kitchen business under sleek and the bath business under assets, added about 50%, uh, ended at about 50% lower than the base of the previous in terms of top line. And the progress has been much slower compared to the decorative business given its larger dependence on demand from new construction and the renovation businesses, which has got affected in a big way in this pandemic. Amidst the tight business conditions, the soft material price trend has been beneficial factor. Notwithstanding the sharp depreciation in the exchange rate, the overall material prices have been lower on a sequential basis as compared to the fourth quarter of the previous financial year. This has helped improving the gross margins for the entire coating business in India, as well as the international operations. In addition, the cost control measures, especially in the area of uh, selling and distribution expenses and admin expenses have helped negate some of the adverse impact of the lower top line for the quarter. In terms of numbers, if you look at the consolidated financials, revenue from operations from Q1 was rupees 2,922.7 crores, lower by 42.7% over the previous year. PBDIT before other income, lower than previous year by 59.8% at rupees 470 crores, while PBT lower than previous year 
by 70.2% at rupees 305.8 crores. Net profit from continuing operations for Q1 lower than the previous year by 67.4 at rupees 219.6 crores. If we come to the standalone financials, revenue from operations for Q1 lower than previous year by 44.1% at rupees 2446.6 crores. PBDIT before other income lower than previous year by 57.2% at rupees 457 crores, while PBT lower than previous year by 65.8% at rupees 337 crores. Net profit for Q1 lower than the previous year by 61.4% at rupees 251.9 crores. As we look forward, what we see is that as mentioned earlier, the demand conditions have improved progressively since May 2020. However, we see some disturbances in the environment due to spurt in COVID cases leading to sporadic lockdown, lockdowns in various states. Monsoons have been good and normal till now, and this brings in good positivity for the good agricultural output this year, adding to the rural economy in a big way. We continue to believe that tier two, tier three, tier four cities will do well and even metros and tier one cities should bounce back as we move ahead. There is still some uncertainty due to the varying spread of the pandemic and it depends on the situation coming under control and returning to normalcy, which will pave the way for good business. In such uncertain environment, we continue to focus on our core strengths, focusing and understanding customer needs and staying relevant in this testing time. Internally, we continue to focus on optimizing our expenses and conserve cash, constantly looking for areas to reduce costs and take up only business critical spends. Thank you, uh, everyone. Uh, we are happy to take any questions you might have now. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask a question, please press star and one. The first question is from the line of Abhinesh Roy from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Sir, uh, fantastic recovery in June. Uh, my question is, uh, you said uh, the Tier 1 and Metro cities have seen a much lower uh, recovery. Uh, last time you mentioned that uh, these uh, cities, Tier 1 and Metro, account for around 40 to maybe even 50 percent of the demand. So, uh, will it be fair to say that the non-Tier 1, non-Metro would have seen a 25 percent growth Given 14% growth in uh, June, I'm asking only for June. Yeah, if you look at the month of June, in fact, uh, I would say that, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, metros and tier one cities would have also recovered definitely as compared to May. Uh, but uh, definitely if you look at the tier uh, two, tier three, tier four cities to that extent, there the growths have been uh, uh, definitely at a very healthy pace uh, in double-digit figures. And sir, in June, uh, how much will be the uh, impact of the inventory pipeline getting back to normal? Uh... So in terms of uh, overall inventory levels, uh, uh, we are back onto the inventory levels of March, so there is no higher inventory in the pipeline as we see it uh, with our retailers. So therefore, there is no piling up of inventory happening with the retailers, and this is something which is very positive because we see that uh, whatever material has been put into the shops uh, has got sold. So in March also, there was no depletion of inventory, so there has been no restock, you understand me, correct? So uh, there is this normal uh, stocking which happens, which uh, retailers would do for uh, looking at the next week sale kind of a zone. And uh, I, I believe that there has been no exceptional inventory stocking anywhere in the system. 
sir one follow up on this uh, entire recovery process you mentioned may was around 80% of last year and june was 14% growth versus last year so was the june month last year a softer base and to better understand can we understand may versus june this year so if may was 80 and june was say 114 so has been has there been a 35 40% growth in june versus may this year so if you look at the last year quarter was at about a 22 percent uh, almost kind of a 20 percent plus growth kind of a zone if we look at it and therefore as compared to that uh, when we look at the current quarter uh, i don't think so the may or the june was any softer from that point of view because last year all three months we had grown fairly well so from that point of view i think uh, the may and june performance that way is uh, definitely quite good my second question is on the fan assure and the sale of ppe and the sale of sanitizer obviously this was not there in the base you are also charging 1500 extra if consumer is willing so if you could tell us how many consumers set uh, went for the 1500 extra and similarly ppe sales and the sanitizer sales all these put together will it be say 5 to 7% of the sales no mm-hmm. sorry i couldn't get your uh, question you are saying uh, uh, fan assure has uh, Contributed to five to seven percent of additional sales is what you're saying? No, all put together. So you did uh, charge fifteen hundred extra to the customer, which was not there earlier. This was a COVID response. Uh, secondly, sanitizer PSB was not there last year in the base. And similarly, yeah. uh, uh, PPE you sold much higher because earlier PPE used to be much lower, and uh, obviously now it is. All put together, will it be five to seven percent of the sale? Not at all. No. Because see, so any new category which we have started, uh, you see the. overall uh, business which comes from the core category is much much higher this is absolutely a new category which has come on the angle and uh, uh, if you remember a large part of that initial output we had directed towards government and ngos in terms of looking at uh, contributing and fighting with the government in the entire pandemic so therefore from that point of view if we look uh, the entire uh, uh you know sanitizers and what has got contributed to sanishon and all is uh, definitely not a very high component the so last question so biscuit uh, category also saw a fantastic recovery and in fact uh, resilience all three months and they said that in july the strong growth has continued now for you uh, if i if i want to understand july whatever uh, period has gone uh, now covid cases are increased across india so the fear factor in consumer would be much higher than earlier where it, it was restricted to a few cities so could you tell us how july has been and is there a consumer behavior of fear which has increased versus earlier see i would say that uh, you know currently the way uh, june has gone uh, what we see definitely as a trend is that uh, customers are now beginning to adjust to the covid in some way or the other uh people are taking all their precautions in terms of what is there we are also seeing that the recovery rate is something which is increasing far more strongly and uh, to that extent the mortality rate has really not gone up overall so from that point of view i think uh, a lot of customers are now taking uh, the into their stride that uh, work has to go on business has to kind of go on so we feel that uh, the fear factor in terms of uh, is something which is uh, now relatively stabilizing and uh, today no one can predict in terms of how the cases will go in future whether they will rise when is the peak going to come whether the peak is not going to come no one can say anything about it and i think now going forward people are saying what happens is happens and therefore i would say that people have adjusted to the fear factor and going ahead you know but for those sporadic uh, you know lockdowns which we are seeing in certain states uh we think that uh, you know the demand pattern should remain similar to what possibly we have seen in june okay okay sir that's all from gadas very helpful thank you thank you the next question is from the line of arnav mitra from credit swiss please go ahead yeah hi uh, good evening everyone uh, my i had a couple of questions on margins so uh, i think your gross margins if i look at it uh, in the first quarter june quarter is slightly lower than what you had in the march quarter despite uh, sequentially rm costs going down uh, is this largely down to mix or any kind of pricing discounting action from your side in fact see if you look at the gross margin as compared to the uh, previous quarter of last year 
the margins have uh, improved to that extent so so what we see is that uh, you know the overall margin if you compare it with the q4 to this thing uh, you know there is definitely some improvement in terms of the raw material prices which has happened uh, uh, there could be a little bit in terms of uh, you know the overall mix in terms of which would have contributed to uh, you know uh, such a number uh, this quarter uh but but the underlying input cost scenario has become more benign in the june quarter versus march quarter is what you're saying uh no i would say that you know from the point of view of uh, uh inputting which we see i don't think so that is something which is uh, you know uh, has remained benign i would only say that in terms of a little bit of a mix which would have kind of contributed in terms of that gross margin uh, 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 behaving like this sure uh, my second question was on staff cost there seems to be a 15% increase uh, between the march quarter and june quarter in the absolute stand alone staff cost so any anything specific here which has driven up the cost uh, and is this the run rate that one should work with you are talking of the employee remuneration employee cost. yes yes staff cost yes. employee cost so see what we see is that uh, largely you know there were certain uh, uh statutory areas which we were kind of dealing with in terms of uh, looking at overall uh, implementation uh, because of uh, gratuity and other things which we had to correct in the system so today we don't see anything which is significant we had taken a small uh, uh, salary hike uh, in terms of uh, the overall numbers and uh, a little bit in terms of adding uh, uh, some more headcounts into that extent but a larger thing which also comes in is from uh, a policy change which we have taken with respect to the gratuity but overall as we kind of go ahead uh, i think this number would definitely lower down sure so the gratuity thing just to clarify could be a, a one time thing that you would have adjusted yeah, yeah yeah just to clarify to add to what amit says it's a one time impact which has come and it's also added uh, to this actual valuation impact also has come in the quarter because With the fall in yields, the retirement liabilities have gone up in this quarter, as compared to what it was in March. Okay, uh, thanks. That's it from my side. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Avi Mehta from IIFL. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Is it really possible to quantify the gratuity and the one-time impact? No. uh no because it's all uh, the overall impact is very difficult to quantify it's something in number something in increment it's all clubbed uh, oh okay no i mean i was just but it is it's a it's a the impact which has come in this quarter that that's uh, that so the last quarter number would be a fair representative to yes 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 Okay, okay, sir. And uh, sir, the second bit, uh, you know, just kind of trying to understand your comment, uh, you know, in detail. You alluded that the customer is now adjusting to the new normal. Would that suggest that, uh, you know, uh, from now on, the impact on growth rate or you know sales would be more linked to lockdowns, because the customer response is more or now more or less kind of coming back to the pre-COVID levels or back to. you know looking at painting as a normal activity is that a fair way to look at this sir see uh, when i said uh, uh, you know uh, what i meant was very clearly that the customer seems to be now adjusting to the environment in terms of saying that there would be some disturbances which will come in and the fear factor is something which is more the adjustment which uh, the customer is making what i meant was that uh, the sporadic lockouts what do they do is that they kind of spoil the continuity of business so you can just imagine that uh, if your house is getting painted and then there is a lockdown which is announced okay it can cause a real disturbance with respect to in terms of uh, uh, you know the next customer kind of thinking of getting the painting done because there is a uncertainty which is there in the environment so i would just say that uh, uh, there are two clear changes one the fear factor people are adjusting to but the sporadic lockdown if they continue to happen they will definitely have an effect on the demand okay sir and sir second uh, my last question is on the input cost now you highlighted that 4q the uh, you know the cost have kind of moderated you meant the uh, market prices right i just wanted to clarify that so the material prices have actually if you see from the q4 of last year to yes, uh, you know to the q1 of this year uh definitely uh, there has been a benefit in terms of the raw material prices going down so 
so that is something which is definitely a benefit in terms of what we are seeing in terms of uh, as a movement of the material prices uh, despite the fact that we have seen that uh, uh, rupee has depreciated further uh, but we still see that because of crude and other uh, you know crude derivatives coming down that has given us a benefit in terms of the material prices and you know what i meant sir uh, just for uh, clarifying the current input uh, cost that we would have incurred in uh, fourth to first quarter would be a fair reflection of the current market price now or not is what i wanted to understand yeah it would be uh, you know fair representation uh, see we don't know really in terms of how quarter two behaves in terms of uh, either from the point of view of a rupee rupee dollar, uh, dollar behavior uh, no, or from yeah. the point of view of uh, crude because as the demand starts picking up we also find that the prices uh, start going up so uh, you know i would say that it is a fair indication in terms of possibly where the prices are and sir the waterproofing which you have done is there a market growth that has been uh, helping us or uh, you know our campaign must have meant mark you know uh we would have been an outsized beneficiary of uh, this waterproofing so if you look at the overall market uh, when we look at uh, say a per capita consumption kind of a thing of a waterproofing requirement at homes i think the market is uh, uh, pretty unexploited today and what really happens is that in a lot of times uh, we do some temporary stuff to kind of cover up the uh, leakage in the damp tank problems which we are facing uh, uh, internally so today what we see is that uh, uh, you know the potential for the waterproofing per se is very very high and therefore whenever there is an awareness which is made to the consumer that there is a specific product or there is something which uh, we can do which will offer him a reprieve against tomorrow leakages and dampness happening i think that is something which is definitely lapped on by the consumer and therefore we feel that the terrace uh, waterproofing campaign increased the awareness and got more people into the painting cycle before the monsoon so that they could kind of take care of their houses so we feel that overall potential in this category still is definitely very very high okay sir thank you very much sir for answering this question thank you thank you the next question is from the line of taha samula from piper serica please go ahead uh thank you for taking my question uh my question was uh, regarding the decorative paint segment uh, what are trends you are seeing in uh, your high ticket size paint for example roya or ethics ultima what kind of trends you are seeing uh, seeing in june july can you please elaborate on that so when we look at uh, basically some of the uh, you know the higher end uh, uh, segments uh, which you mentioned okay both in the interior and the exterior spaces in the interior uh, especially segments which are in the health and hygiene space which is the royal health shield and other variants i think they seem to be doing well and holding us on and this is a trend which we are seeing across cities that we are able to sell that product quite well because the preposition against the antibacterial uh, protection is pretty sh uh, sharp to that extent uh, with respect to uh, in terms of uh, exterior we don't see the same kind of a pace which is there as far as for the interior products to that extent but uh, having said that what we also see is that uh, there is definitely uh, people are more attracted towards the premium and the value for money products at the moment to that extent and there is a little bit of uh, uh, you know uh, down trading which is happening from the super luxury segment uh, in exteriors to the premium uh, segment and the value for money segment thank you hello yeah yeah can uh, can you hear me i am audible yeah yeah boy yeah. yeah, yeah. okay so my second question was regarding the upcoming diwali season when we roll out uh, asian paints magic carpet so what are our plans for that uh, diwali season so uh, today diwali is far away as of now we have to first uh, see the quarter two in terms of what really happens so uh, i think we are definitely kind of uh, uh, looking at more from a 
quarter to quarter at this moment and not really kind of planning for Diwali. Only time will tell in terms of how normalcy kind of happens around that and how the festival season kind of really bear, you know opens up. Okay, okay. Uh, that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Roshan Nayak from Equentis Wealth Advisory. So, uh, thanks for the opportunity. So, uh, can you help me explain how Safe Printing Initiative has spanned out uh, across the country? Okay, uh, we started this initiative uh, in May and we have also done uh, above the line promotion of this campaign across. What we felt was that uh, what it has done for us is that uh, across the towns, uh, you know, we find that customers, uh, you know, have uh, been able to be uh, influenced by the safe painting campaign because uh, the fear they have of getting the external painters in their home, that is something which has uh, uh, got, uh, you know, action because there is a, a reputed brand which is talking of a safe painting which kind of happens where uh, all the painters will come with overalls and masks and all protection along with sanitizers. So I think uh, it has really helped us, uh, one, in terms of looking at the customer, definitely becoming far more confident in terms of getting people in into their houses. And also, it has really helped uh, the painters and contractors also becoming confident of really approaching the customers and telling them that, Today, it is safe to let them into the house because they are following certain standard operating procedures with respect to hygiene and care in terms of what they are taking into their houses. We have seen that uh, this campaign giving us uh, results and leads across cities to that extent, and that has been very, very beneficial to us. So, is the company uh, passing on benefits, like if you are giving more uh, cash discounts, dealer discounts? Like... So, uh, nothing like that, but yes, in the quarter, uh, uh, you know, there has been uh, definitely uh, a slightly little bit more uh, uh, incentivization which has happened, which possibly was done in the months of May and June to kind of ensure that the retailers get the confidence in terms of at least a little bit stocking. Uh, so that they are able to cater to the uh, demand. But there has been nothing very exceptional which has taken uh, the discounting to another level. So there has been an incremental increase in terms of discounting which we have done and incentivization so that uh, we are able to uh, kind of get the retailers to stock for some days at least in terms of catering to the demand. Okay. Uh, and uh, and coming to your uh, double digit volume growth in june uh, so do you think it uh, it is a pent up demand or like it is sustainable going forward so what we see is that uh, uh, since the sales had stopped by 20th of march and we practically had a washout in the month of april a lot of this pent up demand we could see in the month of may which was happening so uh, uh, what we clearly see is that the demand in june uh, uh, could not have been all of the pent out, de pent out demand because, uh, you know, a, a March, a sizable uh, quantity of that pent up demand happened in the month of uh, May. So to that extent, I think we feel that uh, in the month of June, we would have got uh, uh, fresh homes, fresh business, uh, fresh repainting in terms of, uh, uh, you know, homes across the country. Okay, so one more question, if I may excuse me. Uh, which uh, which regions uh, you know, still continue to be affected in India? Uh, like uh, which uh, regions are witnessing a, a sharp recovery and which continues to be affected? Can you give some color on that? So overall, we see that the western region uh, is something which is far more affected. Uh, you know, we have been seeing uh, continuous uh, lockdowns in Maharashtra and uh, you know Mumbai has is affected, and so is the hinterland in terms of the cities. Uh, uh, you know, across uh, in West. Uh, rest, what we see is that all metros are affected across the country. Uh, so <clears throat> you have Chennai, Kolkata, uh, Bangalore in between, okay, uh, Delhi. I think these have been affected overall to that extent. And there have been some uh, uh, tier one uh, cities as well, uh, so which are affected. Ahmedabad, uh, you know, Surat, some of these cities were affected. But uh, to put it, uh, the thing West was the most strongly affected overall. Okay, uh, thank you, thank you so much.
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Avnish Agarwal from Prabhudas Kiladar. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi sir. Uh, my question is again regarding the demand. Uh, if I can recall in the last phone call, we were told that uh, metro the entire one city is around for maybe 40% of the total industry demand. Now, if I look at uh, the current scenario where the May and June have been good, even though metals have been, uh, metals and tier one is still impacted. So, can you share with us that particularly tier two to tier four cities and interiors of the country, how faster the growth has been there to enable 14% volume growth in June? So, you can uh, do your own uh, math in terms of calculating because. Uh, uh, definitely, I think what we have seen is that, uh, you know, the uh, metro and the tier one cities were affected and therefore, as I said, uh, you know, we have got progressively in May and June very, very good and healthy growths uh, coming from the, uh, you know, so the tier three, tier four cities uh, to that extent. But having said that, even with the metro and tier one cities, what we see is that there is a definitely improvement from May to June, which is happening. So I think uh, the improvement is happening all across in terms of what we have seen in the month of June to that extent. But uh, at the end of the day, June, the tier three, tier four cities have uh, far, far outgrown the metros and the tier ones. Okay. Uh, and my first second question is regarding the raw material prices. Uh, we have seen a sharp dip in most, uh, more so crudely in the inputs in the in four Q. And in this quarter, there has been, I would say, a little bit of gains. But uh, would it be suffice to presume that most of the raw material gains have accrued to us or we are still uh, not fully really, uh, realized on the gains of the dip in the crude prices in one case? See, uh, how we see is that there is still uh, quite a bit of volatility in terms of the prices. And uh, so is there a volatility with respect to the uh, rupee dollar parity in terms of what we are seeing. So to that extent, uh, we see that uh, we have realized in terms of the material benefit which we have seen uh, in quarter one. And uh, it all depends in terms of how material prices would behave. But uh, uh, one reason to believe is that if there is <clears throat> demand which kind of goes up, so would be the, uh, you know, the prices of the raw materials to that extent. So, therefore, I don't think so there would be too much of a difference between the material prices as we kind of go forward in terms of looking at the next quarter. But it all depends on the environment. There is still too much of volatility in the environment today. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Soman from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening. Um, my first question is on uh, pricing. Uh, any sort of uh, guidance on uh, uh, what you expect for pricing given that material uh, cost has been fairly benign? See, right now with whatever uh, you know uh, material and prices which have uh, got affected and there has been a compensatory effect in terms of the rupee depreciating, uh, as of now there is no price guidance in terms of what is looking at. So unless you know there is something really drastic really happens in the next quarter, uh, we are not seeing any price guidance as of now. Fair enough. Uh, and secondly, in terms of dealer expansion, have we uh, seen any meaningful dealer expansion, especially given that uh, the growth in uh, smaller towns has been much stronger? So uh, 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 definitely dealer expansion has happened in the months of May and June, especially in tier 3, tier 4 uh, cities. And uh, obviously it is much lower than what we would have kind of looked at in a normal scenario. But uh, having said that, there has been some amount of dealer expansion here. Thanks. Any numbers you can share on the dealer uh, numbers? I mean, in terms of expansion or percentages? No, I would not be able to share any numbers there. All right. Uh, and lastly, uh, uh, any sense on market share? I mean, given that uh, we've done very well in June, uh, any sense on how we've done relative to the other players? You'll know by mid of August. Everyone will publish their results. All right. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shirish Pardeshi from uh, Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, hi, good evening. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, Amit and uh, Burgan sir. Uh, I have a few questions. Uh, would you be able to indicate and help us what kind of volume uh, we have seen, uh, decline we have seen in uh, dec domestic decorators? So overall, uh, see, in terms of, uh, we have uh, spoken of a 44% uh, kind of a, uh, you know, negative, which has happened with respect to the overall business uh, uh, at the standalone level in terms of what we are saying. And uh, to some extent, uh, you know, the uh, volume uh, decline has been much lower as compared to this, which is proportionate with the June increase in terms of the double digit growth which we have had. So definitely, I think uh, when we look at uh, the quarter one for decorative, uh, the, the volume growth has been uh, much lower than this. Uh, see, last quarter you explained that there is a 6 to 8 percent difference between va value and volume. So, is that summation is correct for Q1? Yeah. Yeah, some, uh, see, as we kind of go ahead, uh, that kind of, uh, uh, you know, variation would kind of remain roughly. Uh, it could vary a little because uh, that range varies with respect to in terms of uh, how uh, we are able to kind of uh, grow with respect to the uh, product mix and the focus which is there on the upgradation emulsion, which is a big focus in terms of what we are taking. And last time also I explained that there is a very big focus with respect to looking at uh, the upgradation value for money uh, uh, emulsions in terms of what we are focusing in a very, very big way. And also looking at the undercoats market as we have kind of gone ahead. So basically that band could vary a little, but the band large should lie, lie in that range. Yeah, I got that. Uh, Amit, you just mentioned that a value for money product is seeing the uptick. Uh, is that across urban rural market uh, is the behavior, consumer behavior is suggesting? Uh, yeah, so that behavior uh, is roughly what we see as a trend across. The only thing what really also happens is that uh, when you look at the metros and the tier one uh, and say even the tier two cities, uh, there is a slightly larger contribution of the luxury and the premium products which comes from these cities to that extent. So if you see that if these cities uh, are not possibly growing uh, at the same rate as what the T3, T4 cities are going, the impact would have been, would have been slightly higher. Uh, this uh, related question on that, what would be the value for money or low end emission contribution to overall uh, domestic decorative? I can't give that figure to you. Is it substantially higher or lower? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm seeing it around. Sorry, I can't share the figures. No, we don't share these numbers. Okay, yeah. I'll still try. Okay, uh, my last question is on the. We have seen the uh, other expenses is a decline very sharply at 37 uh, percent. What are the uh, factors which has driven this? No, Jay? as we uh, mentioned earlier, uh, we had been very cautious in spending uh, whatever that either administrative expenses even. Uh, to some extent, some of these uh, distribution expenses, we have been very cautious. And also we have taken a lot of cost control measures and we have spoken to some of our uh, maybe trade partners also to revisit some of these uh, costs. So overall, uh, the internal measures, what we have taken, uh, put this uh, overgate under control. Uh, I got that. Uh, Amit, would you be able to comment something on advertising? Because we've seen uh, post May, you have uh, spent a lot. So, any any color on advertising spend? Yeah. So overall, uh, see, we have been uh, very judicious in terms of you know the way we had been spending. But at the same time, I always keep on commenting that uh, see when you look at uh, you know marketing uh, and when you look at advertising, this is not not like an on and off switch that you can switch it off at any point of time and then you are able to put it on. So I think we have tried uh, very judiciously to spend the money in terms of our campaigns. We have had uh, almost uh, uh, three above the line, uh, very strong campaigns which have been there. One is on safe painting, the other is on terrace waterproofing, and the third one was on Viroprotect uh, sanitizer. So I think we have seen, uh, uh, you know, these kind of above the line campaigns and along with this we have judiciously spent a lot of money with respect to the digital uh, campaigns because what we feel is that uh, given the era where uh, a lot of people are working from home and there are uh, people are putting a lot of eyeballs on digital content. Uh, so that is something which we have kind of taken care in terms of uh, 
getting a good mix at the same time we have not really splurged the money if you see from the marketing overall spends in terms of what we have done to that extent so i think it has been a fairly judicious spend in terms of what we have done okay my last question is on the international business uh, though in the press release you have said that the middle east and africa has done well uh, while we are seeing the challenges in uh, nepal and bangladesh uh, how the situation is there in the month of june or as on uh, date so the good thing is that uh, uh, nepal which was closed uh, in april and may almost completely has opened up in june and we have seen a lot of pent up demand which is uh, there in the month of june to that extent and we believe that uh, uh, you know if this continues and there is no lockdown further i think nepal should bounce back in terms of uh, uh, you know uh, as the quarter goes ahead uh, when we look at uh, even the bangladesh market Bangladesh market was relatively much better than uh, Nepal because we saw uh, openings in the month of May to that extent and therefore we feel that the Bangladesh and the Sri Lankan markets uh, have almost kind of mirrored what has been in India to that extent in terms of the way they have behaved and therefore uh, uh, the June has been uh, a good response in both the markets and we see that uh, going further i think uh, if, if there are no lockdowns and no uh, disturbances we should kind of do well okay all right thank you and all the best thank you the next question is from the line of amit sinha from macquarie please go ahead uh yeah hi uh, hi everyone uh, thanks for the opportunity uh, my question was uh, more uh, from from the overall category uh, demand uh, perspective so while the negative impact due to the current environment is is very well known what i wanted to understand uh, is is uh, is, uh, is uh, there any positive uh, or enabling kind of an environment which is being created uh, from a demand point of view uh, maybe because of uh, more number of people uh, available at home and uh, you know better labor availability uh, maybe in the tier 2 tier 3 towns uh, is, is there any kind of sort uh, any sort of things uh, on the positive side which you would have observed in the last 2 to 3 months okay so there are several uh, i think uh, positive trends in terms of what we are seeing the the real progression of sales from may to june itself is a very very progressive trend in terms of getting a double digit growth so what we feel very clearly is that uh, uh, people want to move on and they would uh, like to carry on with their uh, maintenance uh, activities at home and repainting activities to that extent and therefore uh, i think the paranoia from the people's point of view is kind of going away so i think that is one very good trend in terms of what we are seeing second uh, what we see is that uh, the maintenance led repainting activity which is there is something uh, which people are still getting into uh, surely for uh, there because that is something which they are able to see and given the fact that people are spending so much time in the homes that really is becoming an activity which they would like to kind of get get to do because homes are a emotional place of staying and they would like to stay in beautiful homes from that point of view the third thing which we are seeing is that uh, when it comes to discretionary spend which is in terms of really high, really getting high end decor textures uh, uh, high end wallpapers and so on so forth i think there is where there are people are exercising some caution in terms of really getting into those zones to that extent which is there but overall uh, i think uh, the trends have been fairly clear that in terms of maintenance repainting kind of a zone i think uh, people are not shying away and that is something which people are definitely kind of uh, getting into the zone the other trend which we see is that uh, uh, waterproofing is a good category where people are spending money because uh, i think as i said uh, if you are staying in the home and you find damp walls or leakages people would kind of like to take action against that clearly to that extent and that is something which we are saying people are acting in a uh, in a, in a strong manner immediately to do that extent and to really help the customer we have also launched a diy range which is a, a do it yourself range which uh, uh, takes care of a lot of small articles which customers can do themselves also and this is the first time in the industry uh, that uh, you know any any company is kind of really taking the whole zone of people doing some of these things themselves also in a big way is something which we have placed in the market short sure, th- thanks for the detailed answer 
Uh, second one, while uh, I understand that you know, uh, in terms of the exact market share, you will not be able to comment at this point of time. Uh, just wanted to understand, you know, from a from a competitive positioning point of view, it is. It looks like that you know the larger players across different industries they are they are gaining out of this uh, situation because of better supply chain uh, distribution etc. Is it fair to assume that you know uh, the, the larger you know you and some of the other larger players would have gained at the expense of the smaller and unorganized uh, in the in the last two months? I would say that it is very difficult to say because what we are finding is that some of the regional players in the regions which they are present, they have uh, still better supply chains and they are able to kind of uh, cater to that that requirement quite well. And in India, we have uh, quite a uh, you know sizable number of regional players which are across the country to that extent. And therefore, uh, you know, from that point of view, I think they are able to cater to their regions and so on, support to that extent fairly effectively. Uh, the only thing which has uh, possibly affected everyone, including the organized players, is the fact that uh, uh, you know some of the production activities uh, have got affected because of the uh, you know the labor uh, not being available and the migrant labor kind of uh, vanishing in the months of uh, April, May, and June. So I think that is something which has kind of taken a toll across the industry to that extent, which is there. But by and large, I feel that even uh, some of the relatively smaller players in the regional geographies are doing fairly okay. Okay, sir. Thanks a lot for your answers. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Maheshwari from Ambit Asset Management. Please go ahead. Um, good evening, sir. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Good evening. Uh, sir, two questions, sir. Uh, one thing, um, can you highlight on a qualitative statement or commentary, not a, a precise number, during the last three, four years, as uh, the new two facilities has also been added at Vizac and Mysore, so how much are uh, COGS or the raw material is now so much linked to the uh, crude oil which is there, or any uh, commentary or idea or color that going forward, how much we, are move, we would be moving to water-based chain? and there would be less volatility linked to the crude oil. This is my first question. And second thing, sir, on, as you told, waterproofing is a growing segment, but any chance where Asian paints would be uh, going into the industrial projects, like for metro tunnel projects, for uh, or they would be sticking only to the consumer uh, granular portfolio in the waterproofing? Okay. Uh, as for your first question, see, if we look at... Uh, our larger portfolios are uh, oriented towards the all water-based chemistries and the two new plants which we have also put up are all about uh, the water-based emulsion strongly. So as a trend, we have been kind of pushing uh, uh, water-based in a very, very strong way. But what we must understand is that the impact of crude is also happening on some of the key ingredients which go on to the water-based products which are like uh, certain monomers which are there which go into the basic process of immersion making, which go into the water-based products. So you cannot rule out for sure that uh, today food is uh, directly linked only to solvent-based, uh, uh, you know, paints to that extent. Food also has an impact on the two derivatives which are there. And these derivatives do affect basically the monomer, which is linked to the water-based products also. So therefore, I think the food dependence and the food variability would still be an important factor as far as the raw material prices for paints are concerned. Secondly, as far as the, uh, you know, the big projects are concerned, uh, Asian Paints definitely uh, looks at some of those projects. Uh, uh, we have a project in the institutional division, and as part of that, uh, today we are uh, doing work uh, with the Bangalore Airport. We are doing some work at the Delhi Airport. We are doing a tunnel in Jammu uh, and So we do take up uh, some uh, big projects which are there to that extent as part of our decorative and architectural business. But we also have an industrial uh, division, which is the ACPPC. As part of that, we basically supply for some of the infrastructure products with respect to highways and so on so forth. So we are definitely in that business as well, to that extent, apart from the home base. So, but in uh, waterproofing segment, uh, how, uh, no, no doubt it's a, a, a new segment uh, um, as compared to the overall pain. But the two things over here, uh, 
uh, how much is uh, dependency through the government based institutions uh, because of from the cash flow point of view and second uh, 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 thing how in a 5 to 10 year growing period which you witnessed in paint and you delivered it how long this segment can become like a 30 40000 crore and where you find asian paints over there yeah. okay so uh, when we look at the overall waterproofing business uh, i i would say that uh, the indian market overall is fairly uh, under capitalized in terms of the overall thing and under utilized to that extent and therefore the per capita consumption is far far lower so for instance if you look at china the china the waterproofing business is about 2 billion okay as compared to that the indian business is nothing so to that extent uh, i think it is something which uh, is uh, is a big business potential in terms of the bucket which we see for the coming years to that extent and i think it should kind of carry on for the next 10 to 20 years in terms of the kind of growth which you can get into this business uh, that is one second uh, our dependence in terms of the government sector and so so forth is all indirect it becomes only about the construction firms and the large contractors to that extent who are the direct exposure to the government so from that point of view it doesn't really affect in terms of the liability coming on to the company and sorry to ask the follow up in waterproofing only sir so the margins in terms of relation to the paint in terms of its 1x 1.5 2x any any rough color uh, not precise as a percentage sir if it, if you can do sir so margins overall when you look at the retail segment they are comparable with paints to that extent but definitely when you look at the projects in the institutional business uh, the where you have uh, uh, some uh, liquid membranes and other solid membranes which kind of go in in some type of products there definitely the margins there are definitely uh, lower than paints okay thank you so much sir best wishes thank you The next question is from Ranjit Sirumala from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, first of all, uh, very glad and appreciate that you have started sharing the uh, quantitative details on the volume growth. We always used to get a qualitative comment from you, and we wish that this uh, uh, would continue in the ensuing quarters as well. Uh, now we are coming to the question that uh, the construction chemical business. Uh, Uh, we understand that uh, this is a one to heavy business and the uh, seasonality comes of a dry storm as we move into the future quarters is this understanding right uh, if yes then uh, could you give some color on the growth rate differential between the paints and the water coating i'm not looking for a number but any qualitative comment on this thing specific for the first quarter thank you so as i said i think uh, in the previous uh, answer as well i we think that the uh, you know the whole category of waterproofing is fairly underrepresented in india we also feel that uh, there is a whole need of uh, uh, customer education which is required in terms of what is the right product which should go with respect to their homes when they get dampness or when they have their ceilings which are leaking or they have basements which are not great and so on so forth so i think there is a whole education bit which is required uh, you know both at the repainting level and at the level of new construction as well so uh, as i see forward uh, definitely in the coming times we see that uh, you know the growth trajectory uh, at the waterproofing end would be uh, definitely much higher than as compared to the overall paint trajectory it is fair to assume that even in the one queue the same thing would have been reflected sorry but uh, specific for the first quarter uh, the trend which you are talking about would have been reflected in the first quarter as well that's yeah. right yeah thank you sir thank you the next question is from the line of pulkit singhal from motilal oswal asset management please go ahead yeah hi thank you for taking my question sir continuing firstly on the waterproofing market uh, would you say that uh, if we were to have a similar kind of uh, income per capita india may have a higher potential on waterproofing given the amount of monsoons that we have and the kind of quality of construction here versus china so given the uh, kind of uh, population the kind of homes which we have and not uh, withstanding the weather conditions i think uh, with respect to that uh, even the paint consumption should be much higher to that extent 
So I think from that point of view, even the paint per capita consumption today, as compared to any of the developed countries, is a far cry in India. So from that point of view, I think uh, both paint and waterproofing uh, are definitely much uh, underrepresented, I would say, as far as the overall per capita consumption goes. So then the data was $22 billion in China for waterproofing versus India would be how much? So India roughly, uh, as we know, the market uh, would be in the zone of about 6,000 crores. Okay. But second question, sir, um, given the strong performance that we've seen in June, I mean, are we saying that the repainting cycle, which earlier we might have thought uh, would have been extended because of fear, could now actually contract because people are looking to, you know, build their house and their house, or even protect their houses from these bacteria kind of thing. So is that a possibility uh, uh, as you see the next uh, four, five months, six months? No, I don't think so that uh, it really kind of impacts in terms of contracting of the painting cycle. I just said that uh, the deferment of the painting cycle is something which now would become lesser and lesser because uh, people are getting more confident in terms of looking at getting, uh, you know, painters in into their houses and so on and so forth to that extent. So uh, I, I don't think so. It can lead to only contraction. But uh, what definitely is happening is that uh, as a strategy, Asian Paints is also looking at various means that we can get people to kind of do up, uh, you know, uh, some painting within that cycle. It could be a wall, it could be a stencil, it could be a small texture. So we are looking at uh, occasions where we can excite the customer so that they can be uh, uh, doing some small things uh, during the cycle in the gap of uh, four to five years. We have a maintenance cycle is something which gets uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, added by some of these the interactions that the consumers might have for the decor of the house. Sure. So on, on the other expenses, it's a, a very phenomenal kind of cost-cutting measures. I mean, we've seen a 37% decline in other expense versus 43% in the revenues. And uh, we, I just wanted to understand because this is a quarter where a lot of people kind of identify areas where you can have some structural cost benefit and cost-cutting measures. So how much of this 37% decline can be attributed to, say, some structural fixed cost benefit that will not kind of come back up once the revenues go up? How much of that could be? See, overall, we have, uh, you know, uh, been uh, conserving cash and we have taken fairly stringent cost measures uh, in the first quarter. And these measures are uh, uh, mixed in terms of, you know, all kind of cost in terms of whether there are fixed costs or whether in terms of the variable cost to that extent. I think both costs have been attacked in a very, very strong manner to that extent. And therefore, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the cost uh, thing extends across to various things. So, uh, for instance, just to mention, one area we have looked at is in terms of uh, re-looking at possibly the kind of rentals across for our establishments across the country. So, and at the other side, we have looked at in terms of uh, what freight control measures we can do in terms of conserving cash. So, there have been all kinds of uh, work which has been done around cost in terms of looking at conserving the same. Okay. So, lastly, CAPEX uh, guidance for this year and next year, if you could just say, and when do we start uh, inferring that CAPEX this year? So we have, uh, 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 we have, uh, we are not, uh, you know, stopping any work with respect to CAPEX. Whatever is urgent, what has have to be taken uh, is something which we are uh, kind of giving a go ahead. There is uh, nothing which we have kind of uh, stopped, which is urgent and necessary to be done to that extent. And that is how the company is proceeding because overall what we see is that, uh, uh, you know, the cash flow position is fairly comfortable. Yes, sir, the 370 crores of CAPEX we had in FY20 on a console basis. So, uh, would it be higher? I mean, and because you had a CAPEX phase of two years of FY18 and 19, around 2500 crores. So, I'm just trying to get a sense of uh, where we are in the CAPEX cycle. Will we have another 2000 crores over the next two, three years? Or will it be like now? Or, you know? no. See, the large part of our uh, cycle was over uh, in the previous two years because the two big plants have uh, come up to that extent. And... Uh, in terms of really putting uh, the second cycle of capacity in those plants is some time away to that extent. So anyway, I think there are no very big uh, capex cycles which are kind of coming across. And as I said, that whatever we have to do incremental in terms of doing work around our plants and other things is something which we are taking on.
Great, sir. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jay Doshi from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Jay Doshi from Kotak Securities, you may go ahead with the question. Hi, congratulations on good execution and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, now, if you were to exclude the top 20, 25 cities that are affected by COVID, how do you see the demand traction in the rest of the country as of now as compared to pre-COVID levels? Just want to understand if there is any indirect impact of consumer sentiment or slowdown of economy on the areas that are not particularly affected by COVID. So, uh, frankly, what we see is that for uh, all the tier 3, tier 4 cities, I think uh, the demand is back to the pre-COVID levels and uh, that is something which is definitely giving us a benefit. Uh, understood. Uh, that's it from my side. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Latika Chopra from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, just a quick question. Um, uh, I think part of it was answered in a previous one. Uh, in your annual report, you have talked about institutional and project business executing really well despite uh, you know all the headwinds that you see on real estate front. Has there been any change in the mindset or the uh, strategy of the company to tap into this segment? Uh, and how is the margin profile here uh, versus the retail decorative space? Uh, and the second uh, bit was on adhesives portfolio. I understand it's a fairly small part of your portfolio, but any uh, color on uh, you know your progress uh, in terms of distribution or product portfolio there would be helpful. Thank you. Okay, as far as the project business is concerned, it's a fairly uh, strong strategic integral part of our business, and uh, we have been. Uh, uh, for the last few years have been concentrating on that business in a very, very strong manner. Uh, so that business kind of, uh, kind of imprise, uh, uh, you know, comprises of the fact that uh, it is builders, institutions, hold hotels, and all the big segments which are involved. And that is something which uh, we have been strongly following and it is, continues to be part of our strategy in terms of looking forward. What we have seen definitely is that, uh, you know, in the first three months, uh, definitely, that business, since it is dependent in terms of some of the new construction, uh, which is coming into that extent, uh, is uh, definitely slightly slower than the retail business uh, uh, at the present. But I think the focus is very clear and it is a strategic area for us to kind of really uh, go on for future. As far as margins are concerned, uh, the margins are uh, uh, slightly lower than as what we earn in the retail business uh, when you look at the projects business, because it is a far more competitive business as we see it. Uh, Regarding the adhesives business, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, been kind of, uh, you know, uh, looking at uh, uh, launching one or two products there in terms of what is there. And we have also looked at in terms of upgrading, upgrading our distribution setup, which is there to that extent. Uh, but a larger focus at this point of time had been the core category in terms of the paints, which we have looked at in terms of the months of May and June. But uh, having said that, we are definitely looking at lots of excitements uh, as the additive segments also do. Uh, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Tejas Shah from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thanks for the opportunity. So, a couple of questions. So, in, uh, in some sectors, we are hearing that few companies uh, are using this crisis to fast track certain big bank reforms. Or, or rather reimagining cost structure or supply chain or identifying new drivers of growth. So any such mega change you would like to call out in this crisis, which will redefine Asian paints, let's say two years down the line when we look back to this crisis. So I think uh, some of the areas which we have looked at is definitely in terms of uh, looking at uh, how is it that we can work around in terms of the raw material consumption in a very strong way. And that is the focus we have taken with respect to uh, whether it is uh, sourcing efficiencies or whether it is formulation efficiencies to that extent. And that's a large imperative in terms of what would definitely uh, kind of give us gains even later at the point of time. So that is one imperative which is there. Second, uh, we have looked at in terms of seeing that uh, how our uh, IT forays can be made more effective in terms of really affording people flexibility, flexibility to work from anywhere without posing a threat in terms of any IT security. And therefore, we have uh, looked at upgrading in terms of our IT infrastructure, uh, in terms of how we are able to give 
uh, a large amount of mobility to, of people or flexibility from either working from anywhere, office or home to that extent. And that is something which will definitely kind of give us some advantage in the future in terms of coming times. Uh, so I think uh, these are the principal areas in terms of what we are working very, very strongly in terms of looking at some forays which could help us in future as well. Sure. This is helpful, sir. The second question, sir, you, you mentioned in your comments uh, uh, in one of the answers that India is uh, highly underrepresented in terms of paint market as well. Uh, now, uh, if we see in last uh, five, seven years, we have actually uh, done very well uh, in, in terms of bridging that gap versus Asian peers. So when you still say that India is under, underrepresented, what is the data point you are looking at to actually come to this conclusion? So if you look at from the point of view of, uh, you know, uh, how uh, the per liter GDP is there today in India as compared to uh, what I would see in developed countries, we would be still at a 50% mark. So I think uh, to that extent, I think there is a huge gap between the kind of per capita consumption, uh, what we see in far developed countries and what we see in India. And you must remember that in India, uh, there are all kinds of homes uh, from... Uh, uh, you know, pakka homes to semi-pakka homes to slums to, you know, uh, high-end homes which are there to that extent. And therefore, the consumption kind of really varies in terms of how people are using paints to that extent. So I think the overall plethora is pretty big. And uh, I think the other big opportunity in terms of is that uh, you can look at upgradation in terms of paints in a very strong way, which we are looking at in terms of doing at the bottom level in terms of upgrading people from uh, using some very basic uh, painting material to something which is an organized emulsion in a strong way. Yeah. And so if you have to peg a number in, in like five, seven years, where do you see this number actually optimizing or saturating at in terms of per capita consumption? In see, I think that, uh, you know, this we would be always chasing this number for at least the next two decades. I don't see that this number we will be able to catch up because it all depends in terms of the pace of urbanization, the pace of uh, infrastructure development in terms of what really happens. What we see is in terms of even the kind of government spending which happens with respect to paints is much, much lower even from the point of view of protection, what you should, what uh, ideally should happen in the environment. So I see that uh, it's, a, it's uh, something that you would really change for the next two decades as well. Yes. And that's all from my side and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kalpesh Gupta from Ambit Securities. Please go ahead. Kalpesh Gupta, you may go ahead with the question. There seems to be no response from the line of Kalpesh Gupta. We move to the next question. The next question is from the line of Sirish Paddesi from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, I, I have just uh, two follow-up. Have we taken or are you implementing any price cuts in this uh, last quarter or this uh, month? No. Hello? No, we are not doing any, any price uh, uh, corrections. Okay. And uh, would you be able to help me that in FI20, what kind of advertising spend as a percentage we would have done? Sorry, we can't disclose that figure. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Ajay Tyagi from UTI Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. So uh, while talking about products in the uh, uh, construction chemical space, you talked about uh, how under-indexed we are compared to the other countries. I'm predominantly talking about the waterproofing products. But do you think as these products become popular, they could cannibalize into our uh, painting range of products? Because if there is less of dampness and uh, you know less of leakage, then both on the exterior paints and the interior paints, the replacement cycle could get elongated. Sorry, could you just repeat the question? I missed the last part. Sorry. So I'm saying as, uh, as these uh, products, uh, you know, the waterproofing products gain traction, can they cannibalize our uh, painting range of products? Because if you have less dampness and less of seepage, uh, you would, uh, the frequency of repainting either exterior or interior would be elongated. No, I think uh, that doesn't really happen because today, uh, for example, in exteriors, we have uh, 
products which offer warranty of uh, 15 years and uh, 10 years and 12 years and 15 years kind of a thing. So uh, what we still see is that uh, the good part uh, is that people kind of get uh, get bored of the same colors and same things for a period of time to that extent. And therefore, at that point of time, it is uh, the decor led painting which kind of kicks off to that extent if it is not maintenance led to that extent. So uh, we've largely seen that uh, better durability products or longer uh, warranty products to that extent, which gives a larger longevity to that extent, do not really change the uh, painting cycle too much. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll take that as the last question. I would now like to hand the conference back to Mr. Amit Singhal for closing comments. <clears throat> Okay, thank you so much uh, in terms of uh, being there with us and, uh, you know, uh, asking uh, some relevant, uh, you know, questions which is there. We are happy in terms of saying that uh, we have been able to do relatively better in terms of this quarter one. And uh, I think the indication of the months of May and June is something which is very heartening. We'll have to watch out in terms of what really happens in the next quarter. But thank you all and it's been a pleasure interacting with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. On behalf of Asian Paints Limited, that concludes the conference. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. You may now disconnect your lines.